You are listening to What It's Like with Luce, a podcast highlighting ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm your host, Lucy Norris, and on today's episode, I'm chatting with Australian actress and star of ITV's latest six-part drama series, The Singapore Grip. Coming from Tasmania, this week's guest grew up immersed in performing from as early as she can remember. Discovering dance and music at the age of four, it wasn't until her last few years in school she found acting and decided to head to Sydney's National Institute of Dramatic Art to take things further. Graduating from college, she secured a feature in Australia's most iconic show, Home and Away, and from there her career took off. Acting alongside Chris Hemsworth in Marvel's Thor Ragnarok, Idris Elba and Tom Hiddleston in Emu Runner, and now playing the role of Joan Blackett on ITV, she really is one to watch. Sharing her experiences thus far, here's what it's like to be Georgia Blizzard. Welcome Georgia, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me today. How I like to kick things off is to go all the way back and if you wouldn't mind sharing a few experiences from your childhood. I know that you grew up in Tasmania. Um, So what was that like for you? And maybe if you could tie in where your interest in acting and the world of entertainment came from. Yeah, sure. Um, So I, I did grow up in Tasmania, the little island state at the bottom of Australia, uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful part of the world but uh, we grew up in a relatively small town, um, which now as an adult, I love and crave. But as a kid, I found a little bit frustrating. You know, it did sort of miss some of those things that I was really interested in. Um, But yeah, I'm I'm the youngest of three. I've got two older brothers. And I guess I'd say all of my sort of childhood memories are kind of revolved around performing in some way. I um, I started dance lessons when I was four and I continued that till I was 16. And um, I was certainly never like the best dancer by any means, but I just loved those times where I got to perform on stage. Um, I was always quite interested in music as well. My dad is is like a an encyclopedia of music and there was just always music flooding through our household. So I always really liked to sing. And so I pretty naturally combined singing and dancing um, and found music theatre as a teenager, just on an amateur community level. And um, and I guess I sort of found acting through that. And it was just sort of the thing that really brought me a lot of joy. And um, through that, I guess, started doing drama in my last couple of years of high school and um, had a couple of teachers there that were really encouraging and, and sort of showed me some paths that I could pursue and, and start thinking about it as an actual career not just my hobby that I've been doing. And so then when you did come to the age, I guess, when you had to make those terrible decisions of what you're going to do with your life after school, um, did you decide to go to acting school or that kind of route? Or did you just go straight out into the world and try and um, get some jobs that way? Um, I did go to drama school. I don't think, without that, I don't think I would have known at all what that pathway was. There there wasn't any industry where I grew up. Um, And so it was just this new world to me. Um, But I I auditioned for a few drama schools at the end of high school and and chose to go to NIDA in Sydney. Um, And yeah, spent three years there, got my Bachelor of Dramatic Arts in acting. And and that sort of, I guess, confirmed for me that it was something that I was really interested in. And it it sort of was a window into what the industry actually looks like and um, and how to sort of move forward after that. I'm interested to know what it was about film in particular that made you go that route if, as you said, when you were a child, you did have such an interest in dancing and singing and more of the, the musical aspect of things. Did you ever consider going down the musical theatre route rather than film? Um, I mean, music theatre, I, I just loved. I was absolutely obsessed, but I... I don't think I was ever necessarily good enough at either singing or dancing to sort of pursue that professionally. It was just, I guess that was the avenue where I found performing. I I hadn't done drama classes. I hadn't been on stage in any other way. I hadn't been on screen, but, but the thing that I always loved about it was, and even through something like dance, as I got a bit older, 
I sort of let go of any aspirations of being like a beautiful ballerina. And I, I really took on big character roles and, and would always be using lots of props and singing in funny accents. And I, I really did find acting through that. Um, and then film, I guess it's just sort of, I mean, I, I, I do still love theater a lot. Um, maybe not music theater so much professionally, but I have done a few plays and, and that's still something that I really love too. But um, yeah, film hadn't really occurred to me, I guess, until I got to drama school. And um, I just love this sort of machinery of it all and, and just feeling like a part of this much bigger picture that's, um, that's all working uh, together. And I, I just find it a really magical sort of environment, a film set. And then a lot of, I feel like a lot of um, famous actors and actresses come from Australia. Um, so can you maybe explain to me a little bit about what the scene was like there for you when you were at drama school and then when you were leaving as well? Um, was there a really big industry for you to go into or do you feel like it would have been easier if you were in the UK or, or what was your experience with that? Yeah, there are so many Australian actors sort of on the world stage. I don't quite know what the <laughs> what, what the phenomenon is. I guess I guess there is some great training. I know the drama school that I went to has has a bit of a name worldwide. Um, but industry wise, it is it's certainly much smaller than it is here in the UK or, or obviously in the US. Um, I think a lot of your a, a lot of Australian actors do make the jump overseas because there's just a lot more work um, internationally. So that's that's probably a pretty common aspiration for most young Australian actors or, or older actors as well. Um, yeah, so so a much smaller industry, but you know, I, I, a few things that I sort of got to do in those past few years in theatre, in film, in TV. And there, there is some really lovely stuff that gets made in Australia. Yeah, for sure. And so um, when you finished there, what happened next for you? Did you sign to an agency straight away? Or what were those initial few months like when you graduated? Because I know from graduating, it's sometimes a pretty scary time when you don't know what's going to happen next. So what was that experience like for you? Oh, it's such a weird time. So I did three years. Um, so I finished at the end of 2015. And it's a strange time to graduate um, as an actor, I guess, because you're finishing at the end of the year and then the industry's kind of closed over, over that summer period, well, summer in Australia period um, anyway. So you sort of come out with all this energy and then it's all just kind of settled down for a bit. Um, I did, I, I got an agent out of drama school. That's another thing that was just really great about that taking that avenue is a lot of agents came and watched a lot of our stuff and we sort of had that process that was facilitated through the drama school. Um, so I signed with uh, my Australian agents um, straight away and and yeah had, had a pretty slow couple of months over the sort of Christmas break and then I uh, got straight into it the next year. The start of the year is pilot season in the US so that's always a pretty busy time anyway and um, auditioning wise and and yeah Let's sort of chuck straight into it. What was the first thing you did? Was it home and away or is that, was that during your time at college? Um, the first thing I did was actually a play that uh, happened in Tasmania. So that was super special and just this like amazing synchronicity moment where I'd spent three years away in Sydney and uh, had obviously most of my friends and family hadn't been seeing the things I'd been doing. And so to come back and do my first professional job in my home state was really, really lovely. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I think that play ended and then a week later I was back in Sydney, which was also very cool to have that as my first telly job because that's such a, such a rite of passage, I guess, for Australian actors and yeah. um, an institution in, in our country. So, uh, yeah, those are my first couple of things. What was it like the first day walking onto the Home and Away set? Because as you said, it's such an iconic program. Was it scary at all? Were you nervous? Or can you take me back to the first day? Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think. I mean, I, the, those things are so fast paced. I, I was in one episode only and we filmed, but like tons, most of the episode, but we filmed the whole thing in like half a day. Like it just moves so fast. Um, I was just so excited. Um, 
yeah, I just remember being so thrilled and because it is such an iconic thing, just all of my friends and family were so excited because I think they were probably more excited for that than anything else I will ever do in my entire <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was really fun. It was awesome. And so then I guess um, to some people choosing a career like acting might be a little scary and you know it's one of those things that people will always tell you you can't do until you prove them wrong as you're doing um so did you ever have any moments of doubt maybe or I guess panicked moments where where you felt oh this might not this might not work out or this might not be going the way I thought I mean it's you know everyone knows that it is a very difficult career path to um it's a, a difficult endeavor, but I think in some ways having parents, like both of my parents are teachers, none of my family are in the industry. And I think in a kind of reverse way, that was kind of nice because maybe they weren't quite as aware of how, how difficult it can be. Um, and so have always just been really excited and encouraging, which is really lovely. It definitely is difficult at times and, and you have to get pretty good at handling rejection and and enjoying the feast but also acknowledging the famine that is just a, <laughs> a, um, a necessary part of it I think for me you know it always performing has always just been the thing that brings me so much joy so there are bits of it that are really difficult definitely but if there are moments where it's really not fun like I did I did have a period of maybe nine, nine-ish months where I'd had just a lot was happening in my personal life. I was sort of on a bit of a grief journey and there was a, a lot going on. And at that time, it just was not feeling very fun. And so I did kind of step back for a bit and go, I want this to always be fun. And yes, there's stresses that come with it, but if it's, if it's not bringing me that joy, then it's just not worth doing. And and after taking a step back, then I, it felt really fun again and, and I was able to come into it with that energy. I think that's sort of a thing that I really want to hang on to is like, it's not worth doing if it's not fun because there is so much difficulty that comes with it. Obviously then you worked on some pretty big films like Thor. I can never say the, what is it? Rag, rag, <laughs> I can never say it. Yeah. <laughs> um, an emu runner and then your, your latest project, the Singapore Grip. Um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But can you um, just explain to me how those kind of came about? You know, I guess, I don't know if you'd call them kind of breaking out of the Australian industry into more of the the worldwide market. Um, What was all of that like? That must have been pretty exciting. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, so Thor was definitely quite a surreal experience. I mean, I had a, a tiny, tiny, tiny role in that film, but in such a huge machine was was really surreal to be a part of um that was really funny too i i think i did i sent off an audition tape so that was filmed in australia and i sent off an audition tape for untitled marvel project because they're all so secretive and i i didn't even know that i i just was so outside of that world that it didn't even occur to me what that could possibly be and then I think about four months later, I got a phone call from my agent on a Friday night that said, you're filming on th- in Thor on Monday. I was like, what? I didn't even audition for that. I was like, yes, oh, you did. And so that was just such a bizarre. And I was like texting my brothers and they were so confused and excited. And if home and away made my grandma happy, Thor just made my brother's lives. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was really, really exciting. And that whole process was really cool because I was sort of meant to be there for about a week, but then myself and this other woman, we kind of kept getting brought back to be in other little scenes. So I ended up getting to do like five weeks or something, which was really cool. Um, yeah, I guess every, every job comes about in a different way and some things like that just sort of seem to come out of nowhere and other things like for the Singapore grip, that was a hugely long and intensive audition process and, um, it, 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 does, it does always keep you on your toes, I guess. Nothing, there is sort of no standard way that these things happen. And how do you prepare for a role? Do you have anything in particular that you do or, or any, I don't know, process behind it? Or, or how do you do that? Um, again, I guess every job is different. Um, that is something that's really lovely about theatre is that you do have that 
you know, maybe six week rehearsal process where you're getting to play and try things and, and collaborate with other people. And, and I haven't done any theatre in probably a couple of years now. And I do sort of miss that. I would like to do some again soon because that is such a lovely, um, playful uh, way of exploring. But um, the film, you know, it totally depends. For this job, that the Singapore Grip was definitely the biggest um, role that I've taken on on screen. And, and so I had a lot to work with. And that's 1940s. So I was doing a lot of building out her backstory and just find, finding out who this person is, I guess, and sort of trying to get to the spine of who they are so that you can sort of build out around that and how they move and how they think and how they talk. And, yeah, I guess it's an ever-shifting process, just depending on, on what the job is. And as you mentioned there, you worked recently on The Singapore Grip, which um, looks incredible. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but um, it came out on Sunday. So for anyone that hasn't heard of it or doesn't know what we're talking about, can you give in a nutshell what that whole um, program is about and then how your character fits into it? Yeah, sure. So it's a uh, satirical period drama set in Singapore during um, World War II at the time of the Japanese invasion. The whole thing is sort of a satirical look on uh, into Britain's colonial past and so it centres around the Blackett family who are a wealthy family living in, in Singapore, a um, wealthy British family and I play Joan Blackett. Um, her and her dad Walter who's played by David Morrissey are sort of scheming and and fighting to protect their rubber business as their world is crumbling around them so my character Joan is she's very charming and she's very glamorous and she's very witty and intelligent but she's also very ruthless and very arrogant and uh, doesn't have any qualms sort of chewing people up and spitting them out to sort of help her advance in her goals so very fun quite a nasty woman lots of fun to play <laughs> yeah I'd say it's kind of that thing where everyone says you know even from watching movies like Mean Girls and things you know they love the chance to play a Regina George type character or something like that um and I presume you filmed that in Singapore did you and we actually filmed it in Malaysia because oh, okay. um set in 1940s we needed that uh colonial architecture that doesn't exist in Singapore anymore that's also built up. So yeah, we were, we spent three months in Kuala Lumpur and then about five weeks in Penang, a little island off the Northwest coast. Um, yes, yeah, so that was sort of Feb till June last year, which was just amazing to be in that part of the world and um, making this really cool show in a really cool place. Yeah, I'd say that was amazing. Um, and I guess it's interesting that, or lucky that you got to film that last year before obviously Corona and everything hit because um, I feel like it hit the entertainment industry so much harder than anything else because it impacts on your work so much. So how have you um, found that experience and how did you get through lockdown? Yeah, it has been really tricky for the arts in general. Um, it's been really interesting in a lot of ways, because I actually moved from Australia to London at the very end of February. So I had about two weeks here before we went into lockdown. So oh it's just my been God. <laughs> um, in so many ways. Um, I guess this whole time I've just been trying to stay creative in, in my own ways. That sometimes that's meant knitting and crocheting. Sometimes that's meant playing guitar, um, doing a lot of reading, watching a lot of great things. Um, but yeah, I guess that's, in a way, it has been, it's been difficult and disheartening in, in, at times for our industry, but it's also nice to see how everyone really is taking solace in art, I think, and, and leaning on art to get them through this time. And I think when we, when the industry really is moving again, I think people are going to be really hungry for new stories. and. And it is exciting to have a show, a new show coming out now when, when people are just really eager for new things to sink into. Yeah, I think in a, in a strange way, it is having a really good effect on the new projects that are being released now because I feel like maybe you have the attention of people so much more than what you would have before because everyone is bored or looking for, for new ways to experience different things through 
social media or TV because we can't travel. So I'm sure watching, you know, 1940s Singapore, which was actually Malaysia, but, you know, for the program, <laughs> um, will be really eye opening for people. Um, well, and especially as we have been, you know, stuck inside for so much of the year to sort of see that the beautiful landscape and and such a different environment and sort of travel through your telly on a Sunday night, I think it's really nice as well. Yeah, exactly. And um, so I know leading on from that, no one can predict the future, or even say what we're going to be doing tomorrow in this kind of climate because it's so difficult. But do you know what you'll be doing um, in the, the next coming months? Do you have any other projects you're working on or what does the future hold for you? No, I mean, I really don't at the moment. It has been just sort of everything sort of has been on pause, which in a way, you know, actors are, are pretty prepared <laughs> for, for something like the uncertainty of this time that we've all been experiencing. Um, but things are slowly starting to, to open up again. So hopefully there'll be a job around the corner soon. But at the moment, yeah, just sort of changes week by week. At the moment, I'm learning all of the flags of the world. That's what I've been doing this week. <laughs> Just finding different little things to do and um, yeah, just, just sort of staying creative. I think it's really clear from anyone that knows about your career or has watched the show or is listening right now, you've definitely experienced um, success up to now. So I'd be curious to know if you do have a personal definition of what the word success would mean for you. That's really interesting. Um, I think... I mean, it is such a relative term and it gets thrown around so much, particularly in, in this industry. I think, as I was sort of saying before, I guess my focus is always the thing that brings joy. And I think that's a really, if I can continue to have a life where I'm doing something I love, I couldn't think of anything more successful than that. And I have loved you know, doing, doing a big project like this that's sort of getting a lot of attention. I've also felt just as successful and just as joyous doing, you know, tiny little theatre that maybe gets 50 people a night. Um, so just, yeah, thing, being able to do what I love, I think, is um, and, and find joy from that is all the success I could hope for, really. Yeah, I think that's so nice. And I, I always love speaking to people that have managed to turn their passion into their day job, because I think ultimately that is probably most people's goal. Um, so it's always really nice to hear from people that have managed to do that, which you definitely have. Um, and so I just have one more question and then I'm going to let you go. Um, if I put your 10 year old self in front of you today, <laughs> having been <laughs> through everything you've been through, both in life and career wise, What's the biggest piece of advice you'd give your 10 year old self moving forward in life? Oh my gosh, that made me feel quite emotional when you said that. I think she'd oh. just be so excited. <laughs> um, oh, wow. I, I think if I think back to myself at that age, I just want to really instill her with the confidence to really use her voice and yeah, just, just have more belief in herself. I think, I think, as I'm starting to, I mean, I've just turned 26 and I feel like the older I'm getting and the more I'm doing, I'm just still sort of trying to cultivate more and more confidence to really back myself and back my choices and, and believe that I, I am deserving of certain things. And, and I think that we should be instilling that in all young people, but young girls in particular, really passionately early on. Well, I just want to take this time to say thank you so much for giving up your lunchtime to talk to me. Um, and it's been so interesting chatting to you and hearing about your life journey thus far. So thanks so much, George. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, please rate, share and leave a comment if you like what you hear. And don't forget to subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode. Follow at What Is Life Pod on Instagram and Facebook to keep up with everything that's happening behind the scenes. To find out more about Georgia and to watch the Singapore Grip, visit the links in the show notes. I'll be back next week with more inspiring stories, but for now, this has been What It's Like with Luce.